Ghana katutuare yokinu. Ankole katutuare yokinu. That is how I want us to know more. I am looking for that uh, mode or, or procedure they were using to do their butter tread. Uh, we want him know attain. Maybe just to correct you, it is Lake Albert. Yes, Lake Albert. No twin. Yeah. So hati ojakuru rangu kiasi biki raga habiki. Obokura abantu abali along Lake Albert. Mm. Abo they are fishermen. Kavani kimalini sangu ovaku ovaku soha. Enchuza abo vakazonia baina kutembo sozi. Baroling was to a year, but he is a hari avantravandi, a kanga minka bahoima. Hati hoima never sang a yo avantu already avahidi de enyama bagitarika. So in the exchange inga, Ninkua, Ninkuenchu, then Nompa, Omkaro Guinyama. So I think our ancestors or the people who lived before us, they were actually very, very innovative. And they also did market uh, research in their own way. So they knew Nkaha Halibara Tuaro Buro, Halibata Lima Buro, Nkaha Halibara Tuara Yame Ibahi, Yenka Halibara Tuaro Muni. So briefly, that's how it worked. According to the history we read. Okay, uh, just to stay on trade, uh, currently, so what is the major commodity or um, commodity or service or anything that we can say Bunyoro is trading in right now in the current, current Bunyoro uh, region? What do we think will bring us someone like me who is here and would want to go back to Bunyoro? What would I go looking for if I'm to go for the trading uh, sector? Uh, in the recent past, we've read and we are informed that uh, uh, agriculture remains the main activity, mm. economic activity, like it is with the many parts of Uganda. In the past, we've seen Abantu. Uh, but mm. it has gone down to Alimagamno Pamba to Abagamno no Muani, but I cannot claim that I know how much turn I mean, how many turns we are getting out of that. But those used to be some of the economic activities. But I see people getting more into sugarcane growing, uh, Bakulimed Kaijo and not only because we have pinyara but the other um, sugarcane growers are coming up with new factories in the area but that is for the big um, maybe i would say for not for an everyday person about by two but yeah i'm hogo in a catale but yeah i'm a chakuri in a catale but yeah i'm over in a catale Bakiarima and Kuyaitu, a himba, a choli, factor about a bakilo wing, but in a choli, never to under. So even we have Muha, a winter to Kiarima, but I talk about Kiarim of Toke, but not maybe on a very high commercial, I mean, not on a commercial level. By two, a kina gondeze covers a kirinti, a winter to him to Kiremuno. Has that been to Wasanga Hoga? Simply gave you a clear of Sanga Hat. A Habokuba, a Chaka to the Tonzire. So I went to Sanga to the whole account to a Kachueka Halin Jeri, a tiny Halax over a Kulimi. So Tikia in Kabuling was Sanga almost half a year of Jona Kiawe. So it is a very big challenge as well in terms of trade. Oh, Hati, Hati, we have a challenge here. Trade. I when come some sa wa wa itu wa utu kwe siga. Abantu ba itu ababunyoro. 
tubasomeseze tuta oba naito itwenka ku maintaining obuhangwa bwaito bwa kulima no kuhiga so that we to ikalini itakaliye to can't galen to be maybe into be no so we can to in a trade happening in our region abokuba as i said i still have asked a question of if i come from here i am an investor and i'm told i want to go and invest in bunyoro what will i be looking for atokungamba itakaliye ito abantu balitunzire abantu bainaho kaka kataito kokulimira ebikaijo we know because kinyare liyo so hati iwe nko omuntu omusomesa kati what do advice do you give us the banyoro people to maintain this trade that our ancestors left us with okay thank you ateng i think for me i would say that in, along the way even to to akora gabuli chibimi yetu tukisobola ku bantu kola hati for instance tukagenda into rights of animals so to sobola gamba hati ngungenda kuhige nyamege first of all twina mabasiramu nganyowe abatakujja gilia secondly uh, we have to respect rights as uh, animals so it is yeah. not allowed them themselves the, mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. so what i would say is that we need a team we need a team back home mebunyoro to come and start assessing how and not only assessing our needs in terms of trade in terms of agriculture but also come up with strategies on how we can get involved mm. from generation to generation and this is not um uh, a job that can be done by only one person it is a collective responsibility especially under the local uh, governments because we know that in Uganda uh, the districts are decentralized and that means a, ro a lot because it is it also involves protecting our resources so we need researchers we need people who are specialists in those areas to tell us the best way we can empower our people economically whether it is through trade or whether it is through skills development to be able to be at the same level of development like any other part of the country and this means that tukiaina omlimo mukoto ogokoreko and once we've got the summary of the things that we need to do then it will be our responsibility to make sure we create awareness about the available opportunities because even as we are living here if you ask someone aka kugamba ngino mtwaro kwa pound what can i do with it maybe you get stuck and you don't have any answer because we don't have um approved methods of you know strategies on how we can do that so tukiaita ga kusomesa watu tukiaita ga ku researching tukiaita ga kuba ntukora hamu kurora and even working as an individual is no longer something that is recommended maybe ku kuba na groups za makiara kuba na groups habiyaro such that we trickle down it is not supposed to be a top bottom approach Yes. It should be a bottom up approach bo abantu baitu batugambira mutugonza kola kino this is how we would like to do it and then those who are specialists can actually support them to build on their points you That's mentioned that it you mentioned when you're being um having this reserve of salt kibiro hati i just want to know in do you are you aware of the, the capacity kibiro people do and uh, uh, the amount of uh, salt they do as uh, produced and where it is sold because that is uh, one of the historical uh, um, commodity that we are still having uh, that was used mainly that was exchanged mainly in the in the history of bunyoro do you know what is happening and where does the the salt that comes from kibiro go and where it is traded 
Um, one thing I know is that the salt is still there, but unfortunately at this point, I don't have the statistics of mm -hmm. how much salt we have and how the market bit of it, I, I don't have it, sorry. Mm. Okay, and the fishing, fish, fish in the Lake Albert, uh, what type of fish do we, is it the steel, the, the Banyakiviro, who do fishing or the bagungu. I think we have different tribes that are around Lake Victoria that are, are do different uh, th uh, activities. So did, did you talk about the bagungu? I know bagungu is uh, uh, an ethnic uh, group of Banyoro, although our official language is Runyoro, but we have different groups within Bunyoro. And the bagungu are very important for fishing and because of this Lake Albert that we all know is a lovely lake that produces very sweet fish. How about the fishing industry uh, and the Bagungu people? Where are they in our history and uh, what are they about uh, doing for now in this current uh, kingdom of Bunyoro Kitara? Okay, we will attain you. Uh, I would like to say that when you look at the map of Uganda and you look at uh, Lake Albert, mm -hmm. so it's those people along the shores of Lake Albert that are also engaged in fishing. So we'll have Abagungu, we'll have Abanyakiviro, Habokwa, the lake passes there. And if you go to Seruka, Nahoja Kusanga, Banta Bakorak, Abak Soha. So in terms of the business, uh, according to what I read and the information I get is that it used to be one of those very lucrative businesses, but because of overfishing, in choose Kagen and Iskandera, and when you look at Uganda, the government's policy is that uh, people are not allowed to fish, especially the small fish, the young ones, and because that one has had an impact that the people can no longer get the fish they used to get. Mm. So I, according to what I hear, and I stand to be corrected, it is no longer a very lucrative business because they're not getting the fish that they used to get. It used to be one of the economic activities there to support mm -hmm. people along that, uh, along Bugungu, Kiawa, because that is a dry area where agriculture is not surviving. So the, the economic activity was mainly fish, mm -hmm. which is no longer the case. And that is why you find that people had to, because of the reduction and the decrease in the amount of fish that people are getting, some of them resorted to move away from the lake shores to move to areas where they can maybe uh, plant crops. Mm -hmm. So it is no longer a very, very lucrative business as it used to be. Although we still know that uh, the fishing is still going on, but they need to be very strict. Uh, and the fisheries departments along the shores are making sure that uh, uh, it is regulated. So that is what I can say now. Uh, our viewers, as you're listening to us today on uh, Voice of Bunyoro from Diaspora on TGM Radio in conjunction is, uh, uh, with LTVT, LTVT, LTV. I would want to say that we are about to go to a break or close the show. And please do feel free to call in, text us uh, if you need any, if you have any question. And uh, as I said, we're about to go for a break. I just want to ask our lovely um, guest if there is anything that you think we need the people or our viewers to know about the history of Bunyoro. As I say, this is our first episode. We will be inviting Hadija Amotikisembo to
to come back and elaborate more of, uh, the, about the kings that we have, the history, talk more about basically the history of Bunyoro because as I said, it is a big, a very important history and very extensive that we can't cover it to, up tonight to today in this program. Uh, Hadija uh, Moti, uh, Toki, sorry, uh, is there anything that you want our viewers to, 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 to hear you talk specifically on this uh, beginning of uh, uh, this lovely, lovely uh, program tonight? Uh, thank you, Ateni. Uh, I've got one point to, to talk about. As you, you all know, that uh, one of the things that happened in Uganda was the abolition of kingdoms in uh, 1966. So that had a great impact on our history and people understanding what our history is because between 1966, the kingdoms were restored in 1993. What does that mean? It means that people who were born between 1966 and 1993 did not see much or did not understand what the impact of kingdoms was. They didn't know. But you know, so it was until 1993 that then we see restoration of these uh, kingdoms. So we see a gap of knowledge, we see a gap of appreciation, we see a gap of understanding in there. So in Kavana, we still have a responsibility to teach those people, to tell them how it happened, what happened, for them to tell the, the story because they're the next de de generation. So, so it's very important that we keep those generation gaps by telling these stories to our children and our grandchildren. Yeah, you mentioned uh, top telling uh, this history to the young generation. Is there any literature that is available? For example, in the kingdom, I'm sure uh, as you will be talking more about the history, we have a child uh, kept in, in the kingdom, uh, head offices. Uh, is there any written history, both in English and in Brunyoro, that people can access and read the young generation uh, or people can use to know more about the history of Brunyoro? Do you, do you know any writers? Do you know any um, uh, publishers or any place where we, people can look for the history of Brunyoro, apart from Google, of course? We have Google, everyone goes to Google and Google's things. We don't know some of them and know really what you think. You read different things, but is there any concrete history that is toward somewhere within the kingdom? Uh, thank you, Ateni. I cannot speak for the kingdom hmm. because I don't know how much, uh, how much literature is in their library. But uh, what I know in the past, we used to have write, uh, writers like Nyakatura, mm -hmm. got, uh, uh, Fred Mirimo has written quite a lot yes. about the neuro. We've got uh, Dr. Kiyomura Poli has written something. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe there are other writers also writing, but maybe that's a big challenge. We need to have a list of collections to that say means. this is where mm -hmm. you can find this, this is where you can find this. If you go to Amazon, you get some literature. So I think it's uh, about uh, our own responsibilities to write. I've been thinking I'm writing, maybe I will. Yes. But uh, the only book that is published from my side is about the right of, of persons with disabilities in Uganda. So that one is published and is on Amazon. And it is about the uh, universal education and the challenges they face. Mm. So, thank you. 
Um, I would like to hold it as our viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. And as I've said, we will be, this is our very first show uh, of our program and we'll be coming again uh, soon to give you more about the history of Bunyoro, as we have already been told by the chair of uh, the current chair of Bunyoro Kitara Development Association. We are having a challenge to write books about the history of Bunyoro so that the young generation, as she said, pointed out to us, have got to learn this history. So we have the challenge, and I just want uh, the, the Bunyoro Kitara uh, uh, chair to uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, Bunyoro Kitara Development Association here in the UK. As we about to close, it is important for us to know about this association and then also tell us about maybe where people can get resource, resources. Like for example, she's told us a number of authors in Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom, uh, whether we have those in, in our in our offices here in the UK. And if we do not have them, um, how can we get in touch with these writers from Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom back home? Uh, thank you. Uh, Bunyoro Kitara Development Association UK was started 29 years, uh, 29 years ago. And it was started by Avant Abakuru Gabinyoro, Abaku Ikarahanu, United Kingdom, and Ireland. That time, Avant Abakuru Gabinyoro, and Zahamu, of course, it and like one by one to yes. come up with an idea. Abaku Abakuru Ijahanu, no, to one to Ikarahanu, Naitu to one, maybe into every crew, every two minutes of Gambango. Uina kumanya mtahi wawe, uh, tuwa nerizi bubingi, ebu tusanga hanu, hawa kuwa kunu hali tuile, hawa hakiaka, tuwa tulio muihanga. So, tuwa ntugonza omlingo buwa kuwetera niza, tukabangu tukora hamu, mgezu mm. wawa kuwa tuingile ekitibu, okumuiru kira, kumukanko kukiru kira, ngana. Uh, but also, Tuvana Okanura, Okugamba, most of the Kayom Coco to the Batucha, to the Avanta to Alekerum Coco, to cause the Shak of Aconera, Kurangunabo, but he in the Kile or Mingo, you know, economically, maybe. A Masomer had it was on me, and the room had to Yam the Shama Somera had it was on me, I got to Chata and the Kiriano. Tuvan Ndi ndikaleta ukubangu uh, abanyoro abaku ikara hanu baki utera niza. Hati kufo mbachu wa mkora hama teka gahanu. Uh, Bata nika hektere kinu kandi wa kregesteringa under charity commission. So hama teka uh, aga kikugira gabanga hama teka gatuondera gali according to charity commission. Baitu in general. Um, uh, video uh, to look at welfare, to look at uh, how to elevate poverty. I want to have a little bit of to you okay? You know, in a lot of poverty, so that is how it started. And uh, along the way, uh, so that is how it started. And along those years, different people have served on different committees because they didn't being uh, but now. We are trying to look at re-strategizing it and making it more active and looking at different thematic areas. What can we do under health? What can we do under business? What can we do under education? What can we do under well-being? How about in general, in terms of development back home? Mm -hmm. So there's a series of meetings taking place and we're trying to re-strategize it. Okay, 
Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair and Atoki Hadija for giving us that brief history about the Bunyoro Kitara Development UK. And as I'm saying, viewers, we are going to go for a break right now and uh, we will be coming back. This is uh, the very first episode of this uh, program and we will be tuning in with other programs coming in, speaking about the culture. There are still more about the history, talking about the business within the Bunyoro Kitara King uh, region and many other things to come in the future. Please stay with us and keep connecting and keep following us on Facebook. And thank you for tuning in. And uh, thank you very much to my team and to the lovely guest we had today. Thank you for that brief uh, introduction of the history of Bunyoro. And we hope to hear more about from you in the coming episodes. Hati nkogunga ambire ni tugenda genda umubreke mwebale muno inyuena kui kutuhuliriza kandi tuli emienda ya winyoro mkogu tuga ambire mkazina kaitu wakakingu ile programu inyue atenyi Carolina Ajuna Chibuka mwebale muno kandi mkare ni mutu hondera ha Facebook kandi mutu gambire mutu he about development association this is a program that is meant to inform and educate